So I'll just spend uh, probably a minute talking about uh, where HR is today, and then we will talk a little bit about the environment in which we operate, some of the trends that are there, and then uh, we'll have uh, Dr. Parekh and Mali share uh, their thoughts uh, uh, that we discussed about. So HR through the ages uh, in an upward graph, so that's, that's something positive. When we started off probably in early, uh, before the 60s, HR, the role was more of welfare. Okay, legally it was required for factories to have welfare officers. The focus was meeting basic needs. Uh, uh, practices were in place which will ensure the safety of the worker, ensure there's no exploitation of the worker and so on and so forth. So it was not really about equals, but how do you take care of a disadvantaged class, uh, that is workers. Employers were seen as evil people. Okay, so that's, that's how the role of HR initiated in the industry. And uh, it moved on to the 60s and 70s where the focus was more in terms of uh, uh, job description, productivity, uh, how do we uh, get the right skill uh, in terms of uh, training people. So that was the focus area that we had uh, in the early 60s, 70s. The focus was uh, typical designations used to be personnel, personnel officer or industry relations officer. Okay, And then we moved on to the 70s. Uh, or 80s and 90s when the term HRD really started coming into play and there the focus was on a little more broader. We talked about how do we value these resources, uh, how do we develop them, so uh, the concept of training, skill development and all that started coming in and performance management uh, uh, started taking uh, shape in companies. And then we have Y2K when uh, uh, a lot of things have changed. Uh, HR was uh, uh, wanting a seat at the table, like we discussed yesterday, and uh, how that can be earned is how can HR become a business partner? How can we win the war of talent? How can we uh, influence the strategy of the company? Uh, how do we align pace of people with performance? Uh, how does HR align itself with the business? So those were the focus areas that we had. So that's been the journey so far. And uh, the session going forward, we will talk about 2020, what's next for HR. Having said this, uh, let's look at the environment. The environment that we are in today is, there's, there's a word which, which we've heard uh, uh, being articulated recently and uh, uh, for those who've seen the Unilever or HLL's annual report uh, or their chairman's speech, that was all centered around this. So the economy today is categorized or characterized by volatility, uncertainty, okay, there's no longer certainty, there's no longer predictability. Okay, yesterday we talked about complexity, we, we talked about different columns, right, there are so many data points and we can make the most complex column uh, out of it as well. So we, complexity is the next thing and then ambiguity. Right? We, we talked about uh, earlier about values, but the situations uh, that uh, confront the HR profession or the business today uh, doesn't have one right answer. So it's always a challenge for all professionals, how do we deal in a situation like this? And this is going to be the new normal. So going forward, it's not going to be less volatile, it's not going to be more certain, it's not going to be simple. It's not going to be clear, but it's going to be always volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous. So that's the world that we live in. Okay, and in this world there are some changes that are happening in terms of trends. And I think we've talked uh, about that as well. Uh, I'll just briefly summarize in one slide before I invite uh, Dr. Parikh to talk about uh, uh, what HR uh, capabilities uh, we need to build. We talked about Gen Y. Of course, uh, Murchinjai said he will not refer to baby boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, but Gen Y is a reality. And some of the uh, points, data points that are there talk about, uh, uh, we also talked about there's no longer a word called as loyalty. Gen Y is going to change apparently four jobs before they turn 30. The new generation is not every 20 years, but now the generation gap exists every six years because of the kind of changes in society, technology and so on and so forth. I no longer am able to relate to my son the way I could relate to him five, six years back because 
he is influenced by so many different technologies today. Of course, he is growing as well. He is a teenager. Social media, it's it's in the face today, right? It's it's available. It's prevalent all over. Uh, Mrityanjay talked about uh, using it well for learning, but it's mobile. So social media again is something which is powerful. Okay, it's it's so powerful that it can uh, bring down governments. What happened in Egypt is is something which got triggered on. So countries are becoming protective, and it's it's not only the developed countries which which are trying to save jobs, but even developing countries. Uh, and uh, recently, uh, uh, one of the trainers that I I was attending a training session talked about how GMR got thrown out of Mauritius overnight. Okay, after having invested tremendously in building an airport there, having a legal agreement and so on and so forth, the government just showed them the door overnight. And that's because they wanted to get, create jobs locally. And there is increasing pressures on corporates to be more transparent, more accountable, and more socially conscious. Right? There is uh, legislation which is driving companies to do that, the social pressure which is uh, driving companies to do that, the whole uh, movement of Occupy that happened uh, or, or continues to happen across the world talks about the inequity in terms of distribution of wealth that's getting created. And if organizations and we as professionals don't recognize and uh, be prepared for it, uh, then we are not uh, uh, really going to be ready for the future. This is another thing which is happening. Businesses moving or eco economic power is shifting from the west to the east. And uh, uh, the uh, quantum of jobs that are getting created is shifting from west to east. Okay. Development or growth rates are shifting from west to east. So this again is going to be a trend which uh, will continue uh, and we need to be prepared for that.